I actually, uh, a while back, I had two friends go to prison for selling drugs. And uh, they, don't worry, the story gets better. <laughs> Not for them, they're in prison, but for me, I got material out of it. I like it. <laughs> when drug dealers call you from prison, they always ask the same question. They're always like, who would have thought I go from driving to Benz to sleeping in a cell? Everybody. That's why we asked you to stop. They asked me not to talk about this stuff on stage, but the way I see it, for the next five to seven, I can say what I want. Welcome to Comedy Planet. On today's video, we'll take a look at up-and-coming comedian Ralph Barbosa, who's been shattering the comedy scene lately. Short backstory on the guy. Ralph is originally from Dallas, Texas, and has been doing comedy for a couple of years, but recently had his big breakthrough. He was the 2019 winner of the Funniest Comic in Texas competition, and in 2021, he went on to win the New York Latino Film Festival stand-up competition. He has since recorded three specials, one for HBO and one for Comedy Central. Both of these were released in 2022 and has another one filmed for Netflix that is soon to be released. Ralph is of Mexican descent and was mainly raised by his grandmother, even though both of his parents were in the picture too. He currently has one child, a son. With his amazing timing and super laid-back style of stand-up, he's really catching the public by storm and I really like the guy's sense of humor. Today we'll be taking a look at some of my favorite Ralph Barbosa moments. I really hope you guys enjoy. Let's get into it. When they were dealing like small time drugs like weed and stuff, we didn't really care. But when they started moving to heavier things, we sat down, one of our friends, and we had like a real serious talk. Like, hey man, don't go down this route. Because uh, nobody wants to see you get, you know, locked up or, or killed. And then he started taking us out to eat to really nice restaurants. <laughs> <laughs> and we were all just like, heroin is not that bad. <laughs> Everybody here thinks I like guns. I'm not like a gun freak. But I will say this, it is a little bit of a culture shock when I came here and I saw that your grocery stores don't sell guns. <laughs> that is wild. What if you gotta kill somebody? <laughs> y'all, y'all, you're messing up. What if, like, what's gonna happen? What's gonna happen the day you need eggs and revenge? <laughs> You're just going to have eggs. <laughs> All right, well, come on, whoop some ass. Nightclubs. Nightclubs? People get shot in those here. I don't like them. You look at my face, I only get invited to the ones where someone's going to die that night. Hood people party at nightclubs like some ancient, like, sacrifice shit. Like, yo, there will be blood tonight, but it'll be worth it for a good night. Like, Around 1.45 a.m., everybody's drunk, everybody's still partying, but the eyes start looking around like, who's it gonna be? Somebody. <laughs> this night was too fun for someone not to get shot. <laughs> so I don't be at nightclubs, man. But it's cool, man. Texas has not legalized weed. Uh, we've been asking them to, and they just gave us more guns. We legalized <laughs> <laughs> open carry. <laughs> We were like, we just want to carry weed. They're like, how about carry a bazooka? <laughs> I was like, I don't want to. It's like, no license needed. Like, <laughs> Somebody said weed, which is amazing. I don't know what else to say about it. That's... Weed is good. Uh, very good. I started smoking when I was like 13. I was bullied into it. Honestly, I had a heart for the dude. It was a big dude. I grew up with the guy. He, he got into way heavier drugs. I, I drew the line at weed. But I remember we were like 12, 13. He's like, yo, smoke this weed with me. I got weed. And I was like, nah, no way, man. He was like, smoke this weed with me or I'm going to beat the shit out of you. <laughs> like, yo, are you that desperate for friends? You... <laughs> this guy was literally on some like, if you're not with me, you're against me. So I was like, I'm going to smoke weed with you because I feel like if I don't, you'll be suicidal later, man. Like, and I didn't, I didn't really want to keep smoking weed with the dude on account of uh, he's crazy. <laughs> so I didn't admit that I liked it. I was like, this is dumb, but I was like, you ever seen SpongeBob when Squidward found out he likes Krabby Patties? 
that's how my friends were there, like, you like marijuana, don't you, Ralph? I was like, all right, I do. <laughs> yeah, I don't, even, I don't even smoke weed that often, man. Not, not anymore, at least. Sometimes I'll upload videos of my stand-up on YouTube, and people will be like, this guy's so baked. I'm not. <laughs> this is just my face. I do think that because I smoked so much during puberty, my face got stuck like this. <laughs> you know how they tell you, face gonna get stuck like that. <laughs> Keep making it. Yeah, I don't smoke that often anymore. I, I used to. Uh, I, I really do believe that smoking weed as a teenager saved my life though. I honestly do, because I, I was a troublesome little angry kid. I used to fight for dumb reasons. Somebody would be like, hey man, I was with your girl last night, and I'll take it to, I'll be like, what'd you say about my girl? But weed mellowed me out instantly with the first hit. I remember smoking and just being like. Man, you can have my girl, bro, no problem. I was like, let me introduce you. I like her, so I know you'll love her, you know? Like, <laughs> yeah, mellowed me out, man. For the most part, I was raised by my grandma, though, which I love. When you're being raised by an old lady who doesn't know English, you grow up with zero consequences. I used to get phone calls from school, but who do you think she needed to translate these calls? That's right, I ran that house. Anytime anybody would call speaking English, I would have to translate. She'd put the house phone on speaker and she'd be like, who is it and what are they saying? And if I didn't feel like translating or getting in trouble, I would act like I'm listening and I'd be like, okay. Uh, I don't, they're talking real fast, Grandma, but they're saying something about proof of residency. <laughs> she'd be like, hang up. I'm like, if you say so. That's My friend's wife, she gets mad at us because we, we like to spend money on shoes and we never donate to her causes. He married a really smart woman. Uh, she, she's an environmental scientist, I think. I might be screwing up her job title. I just know I don't like her. <laughs> she cares a lot about Earth and she's always asking us to donate to things. And she tries to get us, man. She throws us these hypotheticals. She's like, if I gave you $300, would you really rather spend it on one pair of shoes that some poor kid in some country probably made with his hands instead of just donating it to something more productive like fighting climate change or global warming? I was like, I don't think you get it. <laughs> I am not the type of dude who would let some little kid's work go to waste. <laughs> I mean, I get where she's coming from, though. She does tell us, like, the stats on Earth, and, you know, it's doing pretty bad. Uh, but I don't want to donate. I don't want to put money into it either. Like, you know, is the Earth going to die if we don't fix it? Yeah, maybe, but I don't know. I think we got to be honest with ourselves as a human race. We've, we've run this Earth into the ground, man. We've, We've turned Earth into like a 99 Honda Civic. <laughs> like, yeah, I don't want this to die. This is my only ride. <laughs> but I, I'm not gonna keep putting money into this thing, man. Like, <laughs> I do want to care more about stuff like the environment. But then I see people who like really care, and I'm like, man, they got it. <laughs> One of my neighbors got his third recycle bin. When I saw that, I was like, I think we're gonna be okay. Virgins, religion, basic bitch. This does remind me of something. Uh, teen pregnancy. 
Here, here's why. I got a little sister and she's not pregnant. Well, she better not be. <laughs> Only God knows, but she has a little friend. A little friend got pregnant and went to a school that's for pregnant bitches. <laughs> like only in America, right? Like a, it's a school for only pregnant teenagers, which is wild because imagine if some regular girl tried to go apply. They're like, you don't qualify. You're not fucking like that. Virgin, get out of here. But I'm very close with my friends, especially because uh, I was an only child. I was an only child for a while until I found out that I have half siblings, which uh, that got me excited. Finding out you have half siblings out there is like finding out that they made sequels to your favorite movie. <laughs> <laughs> you know, when you first hear about these sequels, you want to see these never before seen sequels. <laughs> But then you meet the sequels, <laughs> and you're like, they should have just stopped after that last one. <laughs> Yo, they were making fun of your haircut earlier, right? It's fucked up. You can't make fun, I mean, you can, but it's, it's kind of wrong. It's wrong to make fun of Mexicans with the little man bun ponytail. Because that's our heritage. It derived from that apocalypto shit. You remember that? Just went around full circle. This is 300 BC shit right here. <laughs> Fucking around with our lineage. I would never rock it. It looks ridiculous, but. <laughs> A lot of my friends here in New York think that Texas is racist. <laughs> it is. <laughs> I mean, y'all are racist here too, but it's different. <laughs> Like in Texas, people are racist because they're just biased like that. They were just raised to hate. Uh, y'all get racist, not because it's just in you. Y'all just get racist when it's somebody who's like messing up everybody's day. <laughs> you know what I mean? In Texas, you're like, yo, you brown, I don't like you. Right here, you're just like, I don't care if you brown, but I don't like you because you held up the train. Now I also hate the fact that you're brown. <laughs> I seen a dude holding up the train. He was holding up the train. His backpack wouldn't let the doors close, but he didn't know it was his backpack, so he was just standing there while the doors were like. <laughs> Finally, somebody yelled out. They were like, "Yo, take that sack off and go back to where you came from." <laughs> I was an only child for a long time, which I feel made me into a social weirdo. Like, I don't really like going out. My friends will force me to go out to like bars and parties. And on the way to a party, they always say the same thing. They always be like, you excited? Come on, get excited. <laughs> never once has it worked on me. Like, <laughs> never once have I been like, all right, here I go. <laughs> uh, Pop tarts? Pop tarts, comedians, what is it? Torso strudels? Ah, shit. Bloods and Crips. <laughs> I, look, like, if you watch the commercials, Pop Tarts is like the one that I thought was ghetto. I'm like, yeah, I wouldn't fuck with those. Like. But as I started spending the night at people's houses, Pop Tarts is on some middle class shit. <laughs> yeah. I like Pop Tarts. I like Torso strudels. Too, but it's too much work. Like I gotta put the icing on there. That's that's too. Much. Especially after you buy them at a self checkout store. It's like I sold them to myself. Now I gotta create them. That's bullshit. I've heard pop tarts. I can get people sick. As long as I don't gotta make them, that's fine though. I'll take the cancer. Just don't make me work. But I will. I'll go to parties, but. I'm trying so hard to like be social, but I think people know I'm forcing it. I feel like I'm an undercover cop at parties. <laughs> Cause I just walk around talking to myself. Be like, play it cool, Ralph. <laughs> they think you're one of them. <laughs> and somebody will walk up and be like, hey, you know where the restroom's at? And I'll be like, I don't, I didn't want to be here. <laughs> walk to my car like, you blew it, you blew it. 
All right, next one. We're Latinas, another porn one. Therapy. Latinas don't do therapy. Latinas recommend therapy. They. Yeah, that's all I got on that one. Sometimes people just get straight weird. Like one guy sent me a message on Instagram and I never opened it. So then he sent me the exact same message again on Facebook. <laughs> that's like if you hit on a girl, she rejected you, and then you went home and changed your shirt and hit on her again. <laughs> now you're just weird in two different colors. <laughs> Cartel, anything else? Hold on, hold on. What'd you yell at? Influencers. Influencers and cartels. Babies. And babies. <laughs> yeah, I hate when influencers and like those YouTube families have babies. I feel like that baby was created just for content. <laughs> you can make babies for content, you know, like porn, but don't, <laughs> don't create the baby just to have videos. As far as cartels go, I'm for them. <laughs> they keep the economy going, let's be honest. I mean, they murder and, and, and rape a lot. And, but at least they do it in Mexico. It's like sweatshops, as long as it's not here, you know? I got an iPhone, fuck it. <laughs> I see a lot of girls post their cash app on Instagram. Oh. Yeah, they won't even post naked. They'll just post their cash app like, hey, in case anybody wants to send money. Which I don't think there's anything wrong with that. There's just this one girl that I didn't like. She posted her cash app and then under it, it said, don't be one of those lame guys who only sends like $4. <laughs> I didn't even know her, but that made me so mad. I sent her a message. I was like, hey, I'm gonna need my $4 back. <laughs> Cool, man, I've been having a cool little week. Uh, I ran into my mom's ex-boyfriend the other day. Yeah, he's doing really good, man. He, uh, he was right, we, we were holding him back. <laughs> he dresses so much nicer, he got a car now. I approached him, I had to. I said, dude, if this is what getting away from my mom looks like, I'm ready, bro. <laughs> That's the one dude that broke up with my mom. Every dude she dated, she would dump them. But I remember the day he broke up with her. I was 10 years old, he's walking out the house. I was like, he is going places. <laughs> well, it's been cool, man. Chicago put me in a good mood. I was in a bad mood when I came. The other day back home, I got pulled over. And, and I wasn't moving though, so I, I didn't think it was that fair. I was just, I was parked. I was parked in a parking lot. And then this cop just pulled in behind me and lit me up. But honestly, I was like, damn, he's good. Because I was just about to start speeding. <laughs> he's two steps ahead of me. He's gonna make detective. I felt like he was messing with me a little bit. Because I'm just sitting there in the parking lot riding. You know, he rolls up on me, he knocks on my window. He's like, hey, you've been in this parking lot for quite a while and it's starting to look suspicious. Why are you just parked here? I said, sir, this is gonna sound a little crazy, but the dude who invented parking lots, this is what he wanted us to do with them. <laughs> yeah. He didn't really like that little joke. I was like, I'm doing what I'm supposed to do. Like, you should get in your car and try it out, man. <laughs> yeah, he didn't really like that little joke. Like, I don't think he was racist at all, but as I said that joke, I could see any love he had for Latins just depleting in his eyes. <laughs> he started asking me if I was high. I don't like to smoke weed and go out in public, so when cops ask me things like that, I don't even get nervous, you know? But this time, I was pretty high. <laughs> To give you an idea of how high I was, 
Like, I couldn't even focus on, on the officer talking to me because there was some lady in the parking lot walking around screaming out for somebody named Rocco. <laughs> she was like, Rocco, 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 to the point where, like, I, I, I don't know what the cop was talking about. I was just like, what's going on with Rocco? <laughs> Why is he not answering? <laughs> Am I Rocco? <laughs> he was like, hey, pay attention. He was asking me if I was on drugs or if I had drugs. But I don't know. Like, the way he asked me made me feel like maybe he's looking to party. <laughs> I only say that because cops have an official way of asking things, like cop lingo. They're like, hey, are you under the influence of any drugs? Do you have any substances on you? Things like that. But he didn't ask like that. What he did is he's right here at my window, right? And then he, and then he hits one of these. He goes. <laughs> and then he licked his lips. He He hit a, mi a mean ass P. Diddy time. <laughs> he goes, You do cocaine? <laughs> I was like, I've never tried it, but if you have some, I'll try it once. <laughs> uh, he was asking me for my ID, but look, the whole reason I was in this parking lot. So I borrowed my cousin's car to go to the store, and when I got there, I realized I forgot my wallet. So then I just, you know, sat in the car, killed 20 minutes on Instagram before driving home. <laughs> the whole reason that this cop approached my car was because after he had seen it parked there for a while, he ran the tags, and when it came up under my cousin's name, it showed that my cousin has a warrant out for his arrest. Yeah. And like I said, I don't have my ID, man, and you don't know how hard it is for a Hispanic dude in a 99 Impala <laughs> to convince a cop his name is not Carlos. <laughs> I was like, sir, I'm not this thug you think I am. I was showing all my emails from Banana Republic. I'm like, if I was Carlos, you think I have banana points? Come on, man. I was like, I'm not Carlos. I'm Rocco, maybe. I don't know anymore. Wait, I don't know, man. I started smoking as a teenager which was cool. I grew up with like the exact same group of friends my whole life. The same friends growing up, like a little group of six of us. We're still tight to this day, like brothers, but I always remember right around the time I started smoking, my friends started coming out the closet. <laughs> yeah, it's like I said, it's a group of six of us. It started with one, he, he broke the ice. He let us know that he's bisexual. And at that same day, at that same time, another two of my friends came out and told us that they were gay. So the remaining three of us just kind of looked at each other. <laughs> like trying to figure out who's next. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, in my head, I was like, damn, what if it's me? <laughs> it's just mad confusing. You know how confusing it is to be this 15-year-old kid thinking you're growing up in the streets with the thugs and it turns out, nah, you're just a dude from a predominantly gay neighborhood, is all. <laughs> and it, it threw me off so bad, man, you know what I mean? I'm, I'm, I'm 15, half my friends are coming out the closet, it's confusing. I had to have a heart-to-heart -heart with my buddy. I was like, Paco, you and me have been hanging out every day together since we were seven. Do you think I'm gay too? <laughs> He's like, man, I'll put it to you like this, man. He, we're in school, so he points at my classmates. He's like, you see Jessica and Emily over there? If you, if you could have sex with one, who would you have sex with? I said, either one. He said, okay. What about John and Jessica? <laughs> I said, Jessica, but I know where you're going with this. I should fuck John too, really figure things out. 
He's like, do whatever you want, man. <laughs> so I'm straight now. And, no, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. That's, but yeah, I don't know. Good times as teenagers, you know? I started smoking. My friends were coming out the closet. We were all just putting things in our mouth that we like. <laughs> Learning about ourselves. It's cool, man. I miss, I miss where I grew up. I like that area. I grew up like right in between a really bad neighborhood and a really nice one. So like I've always understood all the hood lingo. But sometimes I'll hear it and like I still don't catch on quite, you know what I mean? It throws me off, I guess because of where I'm at in the area. Like the other day my neighbor was catching up with me. He's like, Ralph, I know you've been hitting some fat licks off these comedy shows, homie. <laughs> Break bread with your king folk, babies. You know me and you, we go way back like four flats on a Cadillac, cuz. <laughs> I was like, man, I don't like when you talk like that, Kyle. <laughs> I can tell I grew up on the badder side of the area just based off of the relationship advice the older dudes used to give me. Like this older neighbor named Roger, I was just venting one day. I was like, yeah, I don't think it's gonna work out with this girl, man. He's like, you gotta do what I do. When I'm having problems with my girl, I look her right in the face and I say, look, baby, you can do what you do in those streets, but at the end of the day, the streets don't love you like I do. <laughs> I was like, I don't think we're having the same type of <laughs> relationship problems there. <laughs> like, yeah, I get jealous sometimes, but you, Roger, I think your girlfriend is a prostitute. <laughs> I can tell, I can tell that I was on the batter side just because of the gas stations, man. Like, if I'm ever in an area and I'm not sure what kind of area it is, like, I'll walk into a gas station. That's how I calculate the statistics, you know what I mean? If I go into a gas station and that store has more hot chips than regular chips, I know my chances of getting shot have gone up 60%. <laughs> But my chances of getting some good weed has gone up 120%. <laughs> I, had a, I had a job at a McDonald's when I was 16. And like, I used to get kind of depressed as a teenager. Like, I'll admit, I even had a little bit of like that self-hatred, but McDonald's saved my life. After two weeks of working there, I was like, nah, I don't hate myself this much. I'm out, I deserve better. Well that's everything for today's video. I really hope you enjoyed it. If you did make sure to like and subscribe, it helps out a lot. If you have any opinions, drop a comment and let me know and I'll do my best to read and respond to it. Everything is welcome. With that said, till next time. Peace.